everyone and welcome to Table Talk. My name is Pastor Mark Sherratt and today I'm joined by Pastor Neil Cameron all the way from Scotland from Apex Church in Peterhead. Welcome Neil, it's so good to have you with us um, today. How are you Thanks. doing? <laughs> I'm doing great Mark, thanks so much for having me. Don't know what the weather is like with you, it started with sunshine uh, and now it is cold and rainy. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, it's not too bad down here, so we're, we're enjoying that. Well, just so everybody who is listening um, uh, knows, it's a joy for us to have Neil with us today. And um, we are going to be um, continuing our uh, series called Conversations. And um, what an incredible message uh, uh, Neil shared with us. And um, we're just going to continue that conversation, just ask a few more questions, get to know Neil just that little bit more. And, um, and I know that those of you who are listening will be inspired um, today by the things that Neil uh, just shares with us again today. So, Neil, so good to be with you, uh, with others again. And just wanted to say that um, what it would be great to do probably just to kick us off so we can get to know you that little bit more is tell us a little bit about your background, your journey, maybe into ministry and pastoral life and a little bit about what you're doing and, and family as well. We can wrap it all up into, into one. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, that's that's a nice big question there. <laughs> and once again, thanks thanks for having me on this on with you, Mark. Uh, I was adopted when I was eleven months old, uh, born in Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, my father was Nigerian. My mother was white Scottish. Uh, she tried to keep me; it didn't work out. So I was adopted, eleven months old, up into this town, Peterhead, which is where I've lived most of my life. Uh, I was adop adopted into the Cameron family. Uh, my family are white. And when I was being raised here in Peterhead, I think, especially when I was at school, I was the only black kid, wow. literally, that was that was in primary school, certainly. <laughs> so, which is sort of difficult to get up the mischief and blame someone else, as you could uh, <laughs> appreciate. Uh, my, my sister and my brother are both blonde-headed. My eldest sister, she's a redhead. So obviously wow. I was told I was adopted quite early, <laughs> which <laughs> made absolute, absolute sense. And yeah. uh, my family was well known in ministry. So mom and dad, they were uh, pastors uh, for as long as I have remembered. So grew up in a Christian home, responded to Jesus when I was very, very young, mm. and uh, grew up within a ministry family. Uh, predominantly, they spent a lot of time in the States. Dad was quite well known. Uh, so therefore, you know, I grew up around some, some of the greats. Uh, I remember having the honor of, as a young man, sort of being able to sit at the table with R.W. Schambach, who wow. was one of the great preachers of the day. Uh, I'm really reflecting back now, but the happy Goodmans and the older generation will maybe uh, know some of the, some, some of the great. So I had this awesome teenage years uh, because when I hit 16, uh, I left school and started traveling uh, with my brother Philip as his bass player. Right. And uh, those those were the era, of course, of uh, Michael Jackson, uh, mm. of, uh, you know, Cool and the Gang, you know, yeah. big afros, the bigger afro you had, the, the better you looked. Showing so, your age so, now. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure my age. I, I'm sure there's some people going, who the heck was that? But, but had, a, had a great time. So it's 16, and from yeah. 16 to 20, travelled with my brother Philip as his bass player, and spent about nine months of the year in the USA. So my thought was that that's what I wanted to do. I never actually wanted to go into ministry, Mark. Wow. And uh, that, yeah. that's why the, the sermon I preached, I said, yes, it's so pertinent. Wow, I never yeah. wanted to go into ministry, and, and there were a couple of reasons. One, uh, I'd never felt qualified. And number two, my family was so well known. I mean, dad was literally, once again, this was late 70s, early 80s. Dad was on the American television all the time, was very well known. Uh, my brother, likewise, uh, as some, were some of my cousins. So I thought, I'm going to spend my whole life being compared to everyone else. They're going to be going, he's, he's not as good as his dad or he's not as good as his brother. So my thought was just, I, I don't want to involve the ministry. Yeah. Long story short, I had a green card at the time, uh, which meant I could stay at the States, was getting married, was traveling at the time. My wife is from Northern Ireland. And we were we were told by uh, the lawyer there, immigration lawyer, yeah, just take your wife across and you can apply for a green card from here. So uh, I went down to the embassy, which was a, a consulate in Edinburgh at the time, and said, look, you know, I'm just married, big smiles. This is my wife. 
we're going across the, the States. I have a green card and she's going to apply from there. To which they replied, no, she's not. Now that you have told us that, oh. you know, she's going nowhere. We will not give her our visa. She must apply from the Scottish side. Wow. That meant I, I obviously couldn't go and travel. So dad, we actually had a training center also here in Peterhead. Wow. So what happened is I uh, always wanted to keep active. So I just started teaching at the Bible school. Now, when I say teaching, I was literally uh, a night's lesson ahead of the class. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would study till about three, four o'clock in the morning and then come in there, you know, about nine o'clock in the morning and pretend like I just knew my subject perfectly. And if ever there was a difficult question, I was like, that is fantastic. Let's put that to the class and see what they think. <laughs> and uh, then started leading the services. And believe it or not, never traveled with my brother after that. You know, the whole yeah. intention was that our life was going to be spent in the States. Uh, started leading the youth group, started teaching at the Bible school, then uh, became assistant to my dad. And then when he passed away, became uh, the full time uh, senior pastor at a wow. church. That's a very brief window into yeah, yeah. my journey into ministry and, and a heap in there, I suppose, that we could discuss as well. Yeah, yeah. But kind of, it's, it's fantastic because it's, uh, you know, before obviously we jump into some of the things that you were sharing in your message, you know, again, you know, you, you're a person who's not just talking about a story. You've actually lived the experience of of how God, you know, has worked in your life, um, you know, from remarkable beginnings, really, and into yeah. what you're doing um, today. You know, I mean, how was it kind of? You know, with all the stuff that's going on today, the conversations about racism and, you know, unfairness and all the all the horrible stuff that's happened. I mean, what was it like for you growing up? Uh, you know, you said you were the only black guy in, in school. I mean, that, yeah. how, how was that? You, you know this, Mark, it, it was quite amazing. And I've, I've said this many times to people. Uh, because our, our, our community is small, we're a community of, of 17,000, one seven. So we're a very small community. And this community just embraced me and loved me from the moment I came into it. Brilliant. So, yeah. so growing, growing up, there was a sense of, I, I say this and some of my friends never understand it. Uh, I never actually had more racism than someone that perhaps wore glasses at a young age, right. you know, had freckles or my sister with, with red hair. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, obviously there was some name calling and, and I'm sure there was some, stuff that going on that you know being a kid you didn't really pick up on uh but but i i had a i had an easy ride i have to say that and that's why i feel so much for those that have really experienced true racism i i never really knew majorly what that was until about 16 when i started traveling in the states right. uh like, like i just said yeah, and yeah. whilst traveling in the states our offices were based in montgomery alabama down in the deep, deep south. <laughs> wow. And, and I sort of went from this naive kid who sort of was loved and was just a local lad to actually seeing racism, you know, in all fronts. And sadly, sadly, especially in the church, you know. So, I, yeah. so we, would be, we would be in churches of, of my goodness, two, three thousand, and there would be a handful of black faces. You know? Yeah, 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 and, and it just amazed me. So, yeah, in my own community, uh, it, it, I didn't have it tough. You know, yeah. once I went out of my community, that's when I saw what it was really like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in many respects, what a, what a beautiful picture of how church should be of embracing people from all different backgrounds and, mm. you know, colours and nature and nurture and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just wonderful to, to, to think that that's really what we should all be about really and um you know so 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 that that's great and you know the gospel you know is is part of that it accepts us all for Absolutely. where we're at and we've become part of christ's family and you know just just is important isn't it and um, yes. yeah fantastic fantastic well, i'd love to kind of stay on that a, a little while with you but time <laughs> time won't allow us today neil but uh, you know i hope that you know, moving down the road in the future, it'd be great for us to have you in person down here I'd in Milton Keynes and uh, for you to share just a, a little bit more about that story as, uh, as well. You know, just jumping into your, what you're sharing, your message, you know, um, um, 
the, sort of you talked on Sunday about saying yes to God. You said that was really a really important part of your story, and everything changed when you know you you encountered that. And you, you know you talked about God's master plan, and and He has a plan, and He's working on that plan. And you know the question I suppose is, am I going to say yes? yes to him is what what you were encouraging us to do and you picked up the story from Luke 15 um sorry Luke 5 wasn't it 1 to 11 yeah. you talked about uh, how Jesus invites Peter who's just this ordinary fisherman guy into his plan and uh, and we know from scripture in, in the future that Peter's going to do some some epic things for God some um, beauties. but would have yeah yeah but but actually at the time you know he would have never have known that and he just yeah. had to make the start there so for those who are listening today maybe thinking about God's plan for their life you know what 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 is it you you, you know you think God's looking for from us I, I think first of all God God is just looking for a willingness to respond to him you know I think I think often I, I was speaking to someone just recently and we were talking about the whole the plan the will the call of God and they were so concerned, you know, if, if they responded to God, that God was going to send them off to some far flung place, you know, <laughs> out in Africa or something like that. Yeah. And and just that ability to say, when it when it comes to the call of God, you know, God can use you in your workplace. God can God can use you in your family. God can use you. You know, you are a link to the chain. And I think God's just looking for this willingness and open a heart. It's it's like the Abraham Isaac story. You know, in Genesis 22, when, when God says to Abram, take your son, your only son, and sacrifice him to me. You know, God, God was never after Isaac. He was after Abraham. And he wanted to know if Abraham was going to be willing to give his most precious thing to him. Yeah. And I think we forget, the Bible says, you know, I, the Lord God, I'm a jealous God. And, and sometimes we, we don't preach on that much. But it's the fact that when we commit our lives to him, when we say Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, we're saying all I am and all I have is yours. Yeah. And I believe that God is just looking for an openness, uh, a willingness to just, God, here I am in whatever it is, in whatever area, I make myself available to you. And I think we, we overcomplicate it at times, Mark. Yeah, uh, and and I think God's just saying, wait a minute, you know, in His master plan, we're we're all a link in the chain, a piece in the in the jigsaw, yeah, and and just just come to Him and and just just respond in that sense of, hey, th this is what I'm. Look, God already knows. God knows all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God yeah. knows all things. So so just in His master plan, just be open and just yeah. be willing, and just wow. say, here I am, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think in in your in your message, you talked about this RSVP sort of invitation, like God sending that out all the time. This invite to, you know, to get involved. Actually, I actually thought, you know, that, that that's really really true and brilliant, brilliant little picture for people. Um, you know, but but still, it seems sometimes, you know, as a as a pastor and preacher, you know, you you feel like you're making invitations often to people and, and very few people respond and sometimes it can be quite quite disheartening and why do you think that many people perhaps um, are not so aware that God is inviting them perhaps into this incredible plan do you think there's a reason yeah, yeah I think I think something not number one I think the enemy obviously fights against that right so so I think there, there's a war going on continually within our mind you, you know uh, I think we then compartmentalize things so often. Yeah. So we, we can get the, you know, we tend to think there's ministry or there's, or there's my church life and there's my home life and there's my family life. Right. And my, there's, there's my this life and that life. So we compartmentalize so many things. So when, it, when we use terms like the plan of God or the call of God, everybody immediately goes into this super spiritual mode of that must mean an area of ministry right well it does actually because if we belong to him everything we do is an area of ministry so when i walk in for a coffee you know the way i respond to the barista the way i respond to those around me yeah. it i i am his ambassador as the yes. bible says so i think we tend to get things down to right you know there's there's the sunday service the church service you know, but the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm doing my own thing and it's totally different. And so, so we, we sort of compartmentalize 
and divide things up. Mark, I am I am the chaplain of our local football team, Peterhead, right. and I remember uh, about twelve years ago when I when I first went there, I was there obviously you know to be there for the players. Most of our players are from central central belt area. I'm from the northeast. It made it so difficult to connect with them. I was so despondent. See that first season, Mark? I, I just felt that I was useless. I was doing nothing. Mm. What was the point of being there? And then God spoke to me and he says, Neil, I haven't placed you here just to pastor the players. I've placed you here, placed you here to pastor the club. <laughs> Revelation. Right. So all of a sudden, when I walk through that door, I walk through that door. It's a football club. As I, when I walk through that door, I see it as my parish. I right. see it as church. <laughs> so the, the relationship I have with the directors is outstanding uh, with, with some, most of the staff, with you know, a lot of the fans that come. I've been asked to get involved in a number of funerals, et cetera, where you know, fans that have no association with church have just got to know me because I've switched off from this mentality of, Sunday service, Sunday ministry, to I'm just wherever I go, I get to minister to God. So yeah. it's this understanding that the Bible says we're all, you, you know, priests unto God, yeah. ministers and priests unto God. So it, it's not that you and I as pastors, you know, we are the called ones and those in the congregation, you know, they just come along. We're all called. So that's why the invitation is to all to be involved in his master plan. Wow, and saying yes to God really makes all the difference. To makes all to, the difference. Yeah, you know, the more people are saying yes to God, the more impact that that we 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 tend to think, yeah. Mark. We tend to think, you know, when we say yes at salvation, we we think that's that's it. That's right. not. That's only the beginning. Yeah, there, there is a sequence of yeses all along ministry. You wow. and I, we've been yeah, for great. many, 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 many years. You know, we're continually having to say yes because the enemy, when it comes to things of God. The enemy is going to want us to say no. Right. No, no, no. So, yeah. so he'll hold us back. He'll work on our mindset, et cetera. That, that's why, like I said, we are continually saying yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. every week there's an opportunity. Something comes. God will maybe prompt you in a certain uh, direction. And, and you're saying yes. Uh, I think the other reason, Mark, if I may say this, is I think some people uh, get comfortable uh, right. and feel that that response of yes is going to challenge the status quo of their right. life. So it's almost like, hey, you know, I think I'm maybe doing enough for Jesus. They maybe not, will not articulate those words, but hey, I'm they doing enough? I'm they serving enough? And, uh, you know, it's the old story. You know, if he's not God of all, he's not God at all. And yeah, it's that yeah. place of total surrender to Jesus. Well, wow, that's fantastic, Neil. And, and, you know, I'm sure people who are listening to this are going to be really encouraged and, and challenged um, by that. You know, th there are those people, though, aren't there, as well, who just sort of feel that maybe, you know, God can't use them. They're not good enough. They feel, you know, why would God ever, ever use, use me? I mean, maybe they know God's got a plan, but to use them, I mean, what, what would you say to people like that? I love, I love uh, the parables of Jesus. And remember in Matthew 25, when Jesus tells the, the parable of the talents, mm. and he, he says that the, the master was going on a long journey, and he gave the one five talents, one two talents, one one talent. And we all preach in that, you know. You know, the one with the five and two, they busied themselves with what the guy with the one, he buried it in the ground, you know you know, wicked, lazy servant, et cetera, et cetera. But there's an incredible line in there, Mark, that most people miss. The Bible says he gave five to one. Listen to this. Each according to his ability. Right. The guy that he gave five talents to, God knew, or the master knew, sorry, that he could handle five. Wow, that's so great. He gave two talents to, the master knew he could handle two because it was according to his ability. And that's why in that story, you know, Jesus teaching says, you know, the guy that got one was wicked and lazy. Why? Because he was given one according to his ability. He had the means, he had the ability, he had the knowledge to handle the one. And what I would say to, to those that maybe feel, you know, I'm not qualified, I'm not capable, I, I don't have what it takes, et cetera, et cetera. What I would say to you, is look, God will give use you according to your ability. 
and then he will take you into right. a new level. Yeah. So if, if you feel disqualified because of the lack of something, understand this, heaven already knows yeah, according well, to your ability. Yes. So heaven will position you or when you respond, heaven will position you according to your ability. And as you are faithful with the small things, then it increases to much. And that's why Jesus told that talent. Yeah. So if we are saying, I just feel I don't have what it takes. God's going, that's okay. There's a starting point. I will <laughs> utilize you yeah. according to that ability. And by the way, heaven always sees us greater than we see ourselves. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Praise God for that. Hey, you, you, yeah. you know, you know, there, there's a bigger difference between the one, you know, there's not such a difference between the one and two than there is between the two and five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, but, but that's a whole preach that's the yes. danger when you get that's a whole preach in itself well that's so, when so was, yeah i was just going to say that's a, that's the thing when guys like you and i get together when we start yeah, to yeah. talk like this it just keeps you know blossoming doesn't it and the truth of that you yeah. know and i think i think on on uh obviously in your message you you went on by saying you know for peter saying yes to god plan actually started when jesus said can i use your boat and yeah. and uh, and then you went on to say you know uh, I, I thought it was beautiful really uh, saying yes to god's plan starts when jesus says can i use your story that's something mm -hmm. everybody's got right and regardless you i think you talked there about you know three points about how will we say yes to god with even on our failure in our pain and even in our successes what we think they are um you know god's able to work in all of those into work and weave us into his master plan regardless of those things yeah. so i don't know if, do you want to explain just a little bit more i know time's ticking away but and, I, and that's massive because that was a bulk of your message but you know what would you would you want to explain anything else about that we we think that everything's got to be picture perfect before god uses us we think that we've got to have all the ducks lined up that everything's got to be spot on before we can engage in the process or else there's the other side you know my story is not glamorous enough it's too simple it's too obvious when you read through the scriptures how often do you do you read there was a woman or a great example is uh, the little slave girl that said to naaman's wife hey you know why don't you tell my master to go we're not giving her name we know naaman's name <laughs> but we're not given that little slave girl's name. But that little slave girl was pivotal. Now, she could have been bitter. She could have been angry. She, she could have said, well, I'm not going to help my master. What am I doing here? Yeah. But out of the abundance of her heart, she, she played a major part in that story. Now, Mark, how often do we read through scripture and there are nameless heroes that only heaven knows Right. That maybe their only purpose is connecting a Naaman to the man of God. Right. And we never hear again. So it's almost like they come in and they're out. But if she had not played her part, <laughs> then Naaman might never have connected with the man of God, would not have been healed from the leprosy, and then says, wait a minute, you know, that's the God I'm going to serve. Yeah. All through scripture, we see this of just people that simply said, I say yes, I may not be front center, I may not never be on a screen like this, uh, maybe people will not know my name, but actually I am a major part in this narrative. And I think if we approach life like that more, so, so I am always looking for opportunities, not looking for the applause, but thinking to myself, I may never know, I've actually just been the link. I have right. been the connection point. Yeah. Actually, if I had not, this would not. And that's yeah. why I think, if you remember, I used the story of my favorite film, It's a Wonderful Life, yes. uh, where, they, where the, the hero there, he, he gets to look at what life would have been like if he had not been born. Yes. Uh, yeah. Small, insignificant things yeah. moving around, small moves around the chessboard but part of the overall master plan of God. Wow. And uh, I, I discovered a long time ago, listen, you don't have to be seen to be significant. Right. <laughs> Some of the more, you know, we, you know, when we speak, tell it, you know, who are the great preachers or the great this or the great that, and, and we, we could name names and name names. Listen, you know, maybe on earth, they're the ones that have been known the most. 
Yeah. But some of the most influential people, we will never know their name because quietly behind the scenes, they have said yes to God. Yeah, yeah. Neil, that is incredible stuff. And, and again, I'm sure people who are listening to this are going to, you know, be really encouraged by that and to see that those smallest or smallest contributions actually really do make the difference in, you know, in God's um, purpose and, and planning. He's able to you know, weave and make things work and, and bring us into that. Just amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. I mean, I'm sure, you know, we could go on for, for, for hours, as we've said, but and time, time's time gone so, you know, really, really quickly. Um, and I just love the way that your last comment, you, 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 uh, um, you said you'll never know the impact that your life may have because you say yes to God. Is there any final comments today that you'd just like to add to that? Remember the story of uh, the 12 spies that were sent out to check out the land, Exodus, early door, uh, sorry, the Book of Numbers. Yes. Uh, isn't it amazing that we remember the name of the two that came back with the good report, Joshua and Caleb, but we struggle to mention one name of the ten. <laughs> now, Mark, so I'll, I'll be honest. I, I have looked at this several times and I've, I've tried to memorize a name so that when someone says, but no one remembers the 10, I can go, Here's the, what about so-and-so? We remember people that say yes. Very rarely do we remember people that say no. History is made by those who say yes. Brilliant. That's really, really good, Neil. That is so, so good and so encouraging. And I know that, um, you know, you'll have really blessed our church and this this kind of just conversation following on from your message. Thank you. I think, I think we'll really, really just seal some things in people's hearts as well. And, um, you know, and again, you're just some guy, you know, who uh, God has got a hold of a, an ordinary guy out of unusual circumstances. And what he's doing in your life has been incredible. The way he's led you and guided you and what you're doing now is, is amazing, you know. So, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and keep inspiring and encouraging people. And thank you for blessing us. And, oh, you, you know, I just wonder whether or not, you know, just the last question is that if there was one thing that we could pray for you, you know, for you and your church right now, you know, what would that be? Is there something there? Absolutely. Just just before I, I answer that, can, can I yeah. just say this, Mark? I just feel the Holy Spirit say this. Uh, you know, I, I am Mr. Average. I, I've said this. I'm not a superstar. I, I am I am truly, I'm, I am not the guy that crosses the line first. I never do. But I always cross the line. <laughs> That's brilliant. And what I, what I want to say to you, if, if, if you, if you feel average, hello, yeah. you're my friend. If, if you feel, you know, nothing special, hello, I'm your friend. Yeah. It, it's not about the superstar. Yeah. Sometimes average is okay. Yeah. Just cross that line. And listen, hey, I would really appreciate, you know, as COVID begins, you know, we're beginning to open up, you know, as you are down in England here in Scotland, yeah. things are changing. And as our community opens up, Mark, would you just pray that there would be new opportunities for us to represent Christ in this small community? Yeah, nearly everyone knows who Apex Church is. We're right in the center of town in the main street. But I am just praying that as our name is, so shall we represent Christ. You know, Apex is a high point or a turning point. And in this small community, we are looking for fresh opportunities. We want to, we want to dig old wells looking for fresh oil to be his hands and feet Amen. extended because we said yes. <laughs> Brilliant stuff, Neil. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'm into that. And church, you know, if you're a member of MKCC, please pray for Neil and Apex Church there in Peterhead. What an amazing story. And uh, we pray that God would lead you onwards and into all that he has um, for you. So thanks so much, Neil, for joining us today. You know, join the conversation on our Facebook page. We'd love for you to do that, to any feedback that you have for us, just 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 send that in. Join us also on the church online um, or in person and every Sunday, nine o'clock and 11 o'clock at this minute in time. And also coming up in May is our new series called Vision. And we're going to be sharing where, you know, we're sensing God is taking us as a church over the next few years as well. So have a great week and uh, we'll see you again on Table Talk next time. God bless you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Bye-bye.